Okay, good afternoon, everybody. I hope that you're enjoying your lunch with Annie Mac Home Mortgage. I hope that you're getting settled in for the National Lunch and Learn League event to begin at 1230 sharp. Went ahead and get everybody uh, in the position, potentially take some notes. Maybe you have already printed your real estate staging expert workbook. Maybe that's going to be something that you'll print afterwards. But either way, you may want to take some notes. My name is Russ Fitzpatrick. I'm the proud founder, one of the founders of the Annie Mac Works Productivity Platform. When the National Lunch and Learn League was put together, we just imagined you as a real estate professional working closely with an Annie Mac home mortgage mortgage professional and really building more common ground, building more of a relationship centered around increasing production, centered around learning more, having a deeper, more professional understanding of the real estate industry, and really locking arms with Annie Mac home mortgage loan originators and loan officers across the country, branch managers working together with real estate brokerages and and real estate agents across the country. Today, it is my pleasure and my privilege to present to you the Real Estate Staging Expert Professional Designation. Our hope is that it upgrades the service that you can provide your sellers when you have a listing prospect, when you have a friend or family member that wants to trust you with their most expensive asset, when you're working with a for sale by owner, when you're working with an expired listing, when you're working with a family in your farm area who's thinking about selling, we wanted to create a way for you to differentiate yourself and to stand out as a higher standard real estate professional, a real estate professional that also carries with him or her the skill set of a staging expert. And this is all brought to you by Annie Mac Home Mortgage and the Annie Mac Works Productivity Platform. My name is Russ Fitzpatrick. That's my new bride, Carrie Fitzpatrick, in the center. And Hallie Augustinelli uh, runs a company in Palm Beach, Florida called An Organized Home. The three of us worked together over the past several years adding to this curriculum. Carrie brings an educator's background. She has a master's degree in education and administration. Hallie is a staging expert. And my background is over 32 years selling residential real estate at the highest levels. I, I worked for Remax for a better than a decade in the Platinum Club for several years in a row. I ran my own brokerages throughout Southeast Florida where I did pretty well. And I bring to you 32 years of experience, not as a decorator, not as a home stager, but as a residential real estate professional, a lifer dog real estate professional, really, who understands the importance of differentiation. When you finally get that opportunity with a friend or family member, when you finally get that opportunity with someone from your sphere of influence, your your daughter's soccer coach, your son's football coach, the baseball coach, or the lady who cut your hair finally says to you, I'm thinking about selling my home. What happens from that moment forward is very important to me. It's a it's an income opportunity of the most the highest return on invested time available in your industry to gain a, a residential real estate listing contract. And we, as a group, think that the best way that you can do that is to stand out as a higher standard real estate professional. So when the three of us had been working together for almost a decade and we've been training real estate agents how to, how to uh, stand out from the crowd, <clears throat> we found a lady named Victoria Goyot who runs a company in New England called the Stagecoach or Stagecoach Services. And we were able to reel her in to add some value to our curriculum. She is a consummate professional 
and someone who takes staging to the next level f for you. So we brought in some additional team members to help us add value to the staging curriculum. So we do the real estate staging expert designation and then Victoria does a portion of it called the advanced staging or beyond RECI. <clears throat> I get to introduce to you today a brand new website just created for this course and the website is reseworks.com reseworks.com Everything you're going to need to participate in these modules and to work together with Annie Mac Home Mortgage to download your workbooks or to complete your home study is available in reseworks.com. That stands for Real Estate Staging Expert Works.com. And I'm going to take this moment to give you a roadmap of what we're going to be doing together. Today we're going to do part one. Part one will be less than an hour long. We'll dig into the nuance of what makes a real estate agent great and how that real estate agent could stand out as a higher standard agent with his clients. How he can make he or she can make common sense recommendations to properly prepare a listing for the marketplace. As you can see on the top right hand side of your screen there's part two part three and then home study to gain your certification so while we only have an hour together today I'm gonna to go through the entirety of part one and I'm gonna give you your home study should you elect to participate you on your own or as a group you can complete part two and part three these modules are also about an hour long they're all free from charge because they're sponsored by Annie Mac Home Mortgage. And last but not least, you cannot gain your certification and you cannot gain access to the marketing materials unless you complete about a 60 to 90 minute home study portion whereby your instructor will be able to assess the what you learned during the first three modules. And if you elect to graduate from the staging designation, you'll be issued a certification from that mortgage professional in the room with you today. They'll be given the certification and hopefully we could celebrate together and, um, and announce the fact that you are a higher standard real estate professional because you've taken the time to complete your real estate staging expert designation. So a little look into the future um, we've used uh, staging as a way to gain access to geographic farm areas. Staging your governor's walk home means more money and a faster sale. We believe that it's true. And we believe that our marketing materials uh, have been proven to take listings in farm areas. We also have letter templates that we've been using for years to get listing appointments with expired listings. Don't let your realtor sell you short on the price of your home. Don't reduce your price. Free professional staging evaluation. This, these are proven letter templates to get listing appointments from your farm area, from the expired listing marketplace, from the for sale by owners. When you graduate from the staging designation, you're also going to receive door hanger templates that have been proven as drop-offs in the expired listing marketplace and or by owners, farm areas. Wherever you have an opportunity to stop by a homeowner's property that might not be home at that time and drop off a, a door hanger for them. We're going to give you postcard templates and all important social media content, all sponsored by Annie Mac Home Mortgage. So here we go. Let's roll up our sleeves and dig in. What's the big deal about staging? Why am I up in arms about this? Why is, why is the opportunity for you to become a real estate staging expert and, and offer a higher standard of service why is this such a big deal to us well 
if you asked a thousand home sellers what the most important thing to them is, they're going to say one of three answers. A thousand home sellers are going to say highest possible price, least amount of time, and the least inconvenience to me. Now, they'll word it differently, but I'm going to show you right now how home staging is proven to serve all three of those seller goals. So real quick, highest possible price, least amount of time, least inconvenience to me, most convenient. <clears throat> well, when you properly prepare a listing for the marketplace and you counsel your seller how to properly stage his or her residence for the marketplace, the evidence is irrefutable. In fact, the national average is a 6.9% increase in the sales price. So if you want to get your sellers the highest possible price, you've got to address the proper preparation and the presentation of the home, and we call that staging. If you want evidence of that, go to the National Association of Realtors websites, go to the National Builders Association, or just flip on your television and watch any home and garden television show that talks about properly preparing a listing for the marketplace. And you will see houses that are listed for $350 do not sell, then they're staged, and then they sell for $369. Or you'll see a house for $450 that doesn't sell for six months and then sells in three days because it was staged properly. You know what I'm talking about, guys? Well, there's plenty of evidence about the fastest sale. Okay, houses that are staged properly sell 40% faster, 40% fewer days on the market than houses that are not staged. In fact, there's plenty of evidence that some of the houses that are sitting on the market in your area right now could sell almost immediately if they were just staged. Now, many of our realtor friends kind of have a cynical perspective about this. But all you have to do is list Polly Perfect's house, and you'll see that Polly Perfect's house sells faster and for more money than S Sam the Slob's house, right? Now, I'm giving you the most graphic and, uh, you know, controversial comparison you got Polly Perfect on the left and you got Sam the Slob on the right whose house sells faster and whose house sells for more money well what you want to do is you want to formalize and package the way that you can help Sam the Slob become Polly Perfect now you can all roll your eyes at that crass analogy but I'm giving you the most black and white version of it right there. Houses that are properly prepared for the marketplace are going to sell faster, up to 40% faster, and for 6 to 13% more money than houses that are not properly prepared. So here's you as a realtor. If I give you an opportunity to tell a seller that you personally sell houses faster and for more money than any other realtor in the marketplace. And you can prove that because you're the one of the few realtors in the market that are certified as a professional staging real estate executive. Is that a fair way for you to differentiate yourself in the marketplace? And I would say amen to that. You're going to get into a for sale honor and say, listen, I'm very well educated in staging. I'm one of the few realtors in the county that are staging professionals. And that extra education helps me sell your house faster, up to 40% faster, and for more money, close to 6 to 13% more money than if you list with a non-staging professional. Well, which would you rather list with? Someone who's a staging professional and a realtor or just a realtor? <clears throat> so here's why some realtors avoid 
the terms home staging. A lot of real estate professionals across the country have some misconceptions that staging residential real estate is somehow very difficult. Like it takes a degree from MIT to be able to stage a house. Or that helping a seller stage their property is somehow a very expensive undertaking and that none of their sellers are going to want to do all that extra stuff. That it's very difficult and expensive. Another misconception, if you polled or interviewed hundreds and hundreds of realtors, a lot of them are going to talk about the activity of renting furniture or installing furniture in vacant homes. Well, that is a part of home staging, and that is a part of how vacant properties can be staged to look as though someone lives there, especially new construction. That represents a very, very small part of what staging is about altogether. And last but not least, I think that many of us believed at one point that many of us believed that staging a real estate property is somehow a very major project. Like it involves remodeling and repainting and recarpeting and retiling residential real estate and that it's a big expensive undertaking. Of all the things that I'm going to show you today, this statistical observation might be the most important. Now, if you take a moment and you really look, and if you're too far away from the screen, you might want to come a little closer, and you might want to understand the light gray section is proper preparation, what I call common sense. And the, the darker black section is remodeling or home repair. So when you think about staging residential real estate, the first thing that should come to mind is lightening and brightening a house. Opening the windows, opening the drapes, opening, cleaning the windows, cleaning the screens, creating an ambiance that's lighter and brighter than when you walked in. And if you stay on line one and you tab over to the right side where it says the average return on investment for lightening and brightening a house, you find that it's the highest return on investment of anything else you can do to a residential piece of real estate is lighten it and brighten it up. And over 84% of the realtors who ever go see a house recommend that a residential real estate listing be, be lightened and brightened when it's put on the market. I think that might prove that 16% of the realtors that enter the real estate business are kind of missing the mark. <laughs> Because 100% of you should recommend lightening and brightening a house when it goes on the market. Cleaning and decluttering. Removing clutter. Um, you know, getting rid of some of the gunk <laughs> or cobwebs or stains. Cleaning and decluttering. The second highest return on invested time for a home seller is absolutely taking clutter away and cleaning up some of the dirtier areas of a house. That's not a major project. That's not remodeling. That's just some common sense clean and declutter. Staying on the outside of the house, landscape and trim. That's the third highest return on invested time for a home seller. And last but not least, staging furniture is almost always the activity of either removing furniture or moving the position of the furniture. It very rarely adds furniture. In fact, I could tell you that 95% of the staging recommendations that a, a, an experienced staging professional will make will be to remo remove items entirely from the room. Things that just take away from the opportunity to build uh, an emotional connection with that space. So I want you to start, stop saying the word staging for a few minutes and start saying the word common sense. If you start to think of commonsensical decisions that can help you maximize the sale price, then you stop making it such a complex undertaking.
Well, more important than all that, more important than statistics, more important than the math, what if you as a realtor were less nervous when you approached a for sale by owner? What if we take out the word less nervous and we make you more confident? What if we gave you a certain amount of swag when you were approaching an expired listing? What if you had your shoulders back and your chest out and you were approaching a, a, a farming client who was thinking about listing with you or listing with that other realtor and you had a way to make that seller feel like you were the best choice? And dare I say, what if you felt like you were the best choice? I know we got some cocky realtors in the room. And they, they already know what I'm talking about, about the swagger that comes from feeling you're the best choice to list your house with. But what if we could get you into more living rooms? What if you as a realtor can get into more living rooms, take more listings, and ultimately sell more houses because of this course? If we do that together, I'll bet you, you and that mortgage professional in the room are going to be friends for a long time. That's what Annie Mac Works is all about. Getting you and your mortgage professional to help you feel more confident, take more listings and sell more houses as a real estate aging uh, a real estate staging expert. The last thing that I want to talk about before we dig into the actual staging is how you prospect. See, if you drive around the country, which I have, I've flown around the country and visited with some of the top real estate agents in the country. And I have the luxury of visiting a lot of different real estate offices to gain different perspective. The most frequent marketing terminology we see from you realtors is free CMA. How much is your home worth? Or gain a broker's price opinion. We see all the realtors telling sellers that they have free market data reports, neighborhood news, or property resale reports. In fact, they, they put those in postcards and, and letter templates, and they send them out to their farm areas. <clears throat> if you ever studied the Craig Proctor Group or Dan Kennedy's unique selling propositions, you see a lot of 60-day sale guarantees and 30-day sale guarantees. We also see, if I can't sell your home, I'll buy it. Wow, that's a scary one. In fact, I know of a guy who lost his real estate license for saying exactly those words and not being able to fulfill the promises that he made. <clears throat> I'll sell your home in 60 days or less or I'll make your mortgage payment until it's sold. The hair on the back of a lot of your necks stand up when you say that. That's Those are scary propositions, aren't they? Those are risky sales philosophies. But a lot of realtors across the country have resorted to these kind of dynamic, unique selling propositions because listings are so valuable. If you can get into living rooms, you can literally manufacture buyers. If you can, if you can take listings, you get more buyers than you know what to do with. Isn't that true? How many of you have seen this truck out there? Move with me. And use this truck for free. You know, there's a truck like that in almost every major real estate market across the country. I want to invite you to just use Adobe Illustrator. Put that sign on the side of a truck on a postcard. And then just provide a rider rental truck whenever someone takes you up on that offer. Move with me and use this truck for free with a little asterisk at the bottom that says free rental truck up to $150 value. Uh, provided by U-Haul. <laughs> but at least the move with me and use this truck for free idea doesn't have to be limited to the people that go out and lease a new truck for $600. You can actually use Photoshop and or Facebook to put the image out of your truck that you let them borrow. But in the small print, say, we'll rent you a truck from U-Haul or Ryder. Move with me and use this truck for free is a unique selling proposition. A lot of realtors love this sentence. In fact, they're using it right now. I could sell your home for the highest possible price if you can close by Halloween 2017. They use these dates to say to their client, hey, 
If you can sell by October 30th, I could sell your house for the highest possible price because interest rates are low, inventory is low, and buyers are in a frenzy right now because they're trying to get into a home and get a contract on a property before the new school year. So they've got to have a contract by August 25th. So as long as you can close by October, we can get your house sold for the highest possible price because those families want to get into this school district before the school year starts. Well, today I want to invite you to start prospecting differently because I've been doing it this way in Southeast Florida for two decades. We'll send a letter to an expired listing that says, don't reduce your price. Allow us to give you a free staging evaluation, an eight-page report valued at $600, absolutely free and with no obligation. When you send that out to an expired, you get calls back. When you knock on an expired listing's door and you say, hey, I bet your realtor's been telling you to drop your price. Look, don't drop your price. Why don't you let me come over and do a staging evaluation for you? Let me analyze your house for the equity killers, the deal killers. Let me do an eight-page report that would typically cost about 600 bucks. And let me do that for you absolutely free with no obligation. When I'm done, I'll bet you'll know that you don't have to reduce your price. At least you don't have to reduce it as much as your other realtor was telling you to. And I'll bet you that you see why I'm the best realtor in town. Because I'm going to help you make some common sense decisions to help you maximize the sale price of your home rather than just stick it in the MLS and hope for the best. Isn't that what sellers think? They think our realtors just stick it in the MLS and cross their fingers. Well, what if you showed up as a staging professional? Certified staging professional offers $600 pre-listing evaluation and analysis free of charge when you call Betty with XYZ Real Estate. I know I'm a little melodramatic and some of you guys might be rolling your eyes, but I'm going to tell you what. I know from 30 years experience that you can get into more living rooms if you stop talking about all the things on the right and you start talking about all the things on the left. See, every realtor saying free CMA Every realtor is approaching expired listings. Every realtor is approaching by owners, but so few of them are approaching it from a certified staging professional perspective and saying, look, whether you list with me or not, even if you're going to sell your house by owner, why don't you let me do a staging evaluation for you for free? It's about a $600 value, and I'm the only realtor in town that's certified as a staging professional, so why don't you let me do that for you? Now, this is especially effective in farm areas, in social media, and ultimately in um, the expired listing and for sale bond market. Increase your sale price by 6 to 13%. Speed up your sale by as much as 40%. Free staging service. Call Betty at XYZ Realty. These are great social media posts to differentiate you as a realtor. These are great postcards that can be sent out to a farm area. Increase your sale price by 6 to 13%. Speed up your sale by as much as 40%. Now, if you go back to the thousand sellers interviewed, all of them said, I want a higher price, I want to sell it faster, and I don't want to be inconvenienced. Those are the three things they really want from their realtors. So when you're a staging professional, you're kind of harping on the same three things that your real estate professional, I mean, that your seller wants you to harp on. So listing your house with a staging professional means more money and a faster sale. Don't let your realtor sell you short on the price of your home. Don't reduce your price. Here's a, uh, a door hanger, free staging consultation, 6 to 13% higher prices, sold 40% faster. Call Russ and Carrie, certified staging professionals, professional staging experts to sell your home. Free staging for your Wyndham Lakes home. Fact, certified staging experts sell houses for more money. 6 to 13% higher prices, 40% faster sale. So, 
This is absolutely my favorite part. I said the statistics were the most important, and you have to understand the numbers to really know, you know, how you're going to help your sellers. But I did a, I did a study of real estate listings in Southeast Florida. So we were very fair in the way that we evaluated active listings. We wanted to go to upper class, upper class, middle, upper middle class. We didn't go into the elite luxury marketplace and we didn't stay in the sector of starter homes or inexpensive real estate. In Southeast Florida, we looked at properties that were above 400,000. So anywhere between 400 and $600,000 price points, which is upper middle class residential real estate in Southeast Florida. We also went to only MLS active listings. So we didn't surprise anybody. We didn't go to the buy owners or, you know, people that were off the market. Listen carefully. We called the top listing agents in our community. We actually called some of the national franchise brands. We called some of the larger independents. And we gave them 24 hours notice before showing. So we called them on a 1 o'clock on a Thursday. And we asked them if we could show the house after 1 o'clock on Friday, giving them 24 hours notice. The other thing we did is we eliminated all foreclosures. We eliminated all short sales. So if you understand the, the type of the study that we did, we were looking for retail, equity-seeking sellers. These people supposedly were trying to achieve the highest possible price for the real estate. They've hired a residential real estate professional to counsel them. And then we gave them 24 hours notice. Now, there's one other element to this study that I want to share with you. I had been one of the best known realtors in those counties for 20 years, 25 years. Every listing agent knew me that showed it, that we showed. They all knew my name. They knew I would never take out a buyer who was not qualified. I was too experienced and too productive to do that. And I actually made a nod that I said, this buyer is ready to buy tomorrow. Okay? So I was giving the listing agent a hint that this was a very high caliber borrower that was coming into their home that was going to be making a purchasing decision tomorrow. Now, I know you'd think, oh, that's kid's full of baloney, but I carried a little bit of credibility in my marketplace, so I think that at least gave them a hint to put their best foot forward. Now, retail equity-seeking seller reportedly looking for the highest possible price, paying a full commission to a full-service real estate professional for counsel, and we gave them 24 hours notice before we came to see their house. Then we started to take pictures of the things that we saw in the four hundred to six hundred thousand dollar marketplace with all the counsel of a real estate agent. And now you want to understand why I'm so passionate about you upgrading to a higher standard. See, the first thing you should write down is that real estate real estate staging is not a major expensive project but moreover it's about CLR calcium lime and rust and if you go to Walgreens or you go to Amazon right now you can buy a bottle of CLR for about five or six bucks on the picture on your left you're gonna see that staging is not about renting furniture it's about caulk, C-A-U-L-K, caulk. You can get caulk at the dollar store for a dollar, 99 cents a tube. Now, whether it's clear caulk or white caulk, it's just caulk. It's not expensive. It's a lot about little common sense moves. These are half a million dollar houses. 
And nobody approached the seller with some suggestions that could help them get top dollar. We saw bookshelves in beautiful libraries and dens that you couldn't imagine what the new residents would do with that bookshelf because it was so packed full of personal property. We saw wood rot. And something you should write down about wood rot is it's not if you're going to fix the wood rot. It's when are you going to fix the wood rot. Are you as a real estate professional going to recommend that it's fixed six days before closing to slow up the second termite inspection has to be done and then because of TRID, the, the transaction is delayed because you didn't get your clear to close because you didn't have a clear termite and now everybody's got a moving truck filled and nobody's closing because you did the wood rot too late? Taking the time to address these common sense issues is going to help. Now this house was on a lake. You can barely make out the lake in the top of the picture. And to the left of the rear entry by the cabana bath, there was a there was a pool. Well, look what you saw when you walked outside of this half a million dollar house in southeast Florida by the beautiful pool next to the gorgeous lake. Your eyes were drawn to Mother's Little Helper out here the Marlboro Light station. And believe me, it did smell. So the consumer that was coming to see this house was distracted and brought their attention to something that was f foul. No, no doubt about it. We saw a lot of wood rot, active wood rot in houses that were on the market because the realtor just stuck their head in the ground like, a, like an ostrich with their head in the sand. Just just not willing to address those issues that would make a borrower feel like the house just isn't maintained properly. That's what they think. This house just isn't maintained properly. I'm going to tell you a quick story about the rust on the left-hand side of your picture. I showed a home that had a faucet or a spigot outside of it that looked like this. And the wife was ready to make an offer on the house. And the husband said, no, we're not going to buy this house. And I stood there and I, I waited for the shoe to drop. He said, honey, there's, there's a lot of mold in this house. Now he was looking at a picture like the one on the left and he had surmised by his own, you know, construction expertise that the, the water had dripped behind that spigot and that that water spigot had allowed water to drain behind the CBS and the stucco and that because of that the entire house was filled with mold. Do you see where one common sense decision to repair that little drip and and paint it would make all the difference in that consumer not guessing that the house was filled with mold? We saw a lot of flower beds in active listings with old mulch and garden hoses that weren't put away properly or just weeds. Dollar weed or nevergreens was a, a theme of what we saw in the active residential real estate marketplace. Talk about nevergreens. I think that that palm frond on the left or that palm tree on the left might even get flagged by an appraiser. How many of you have seen an appraiser flag a dead tree and say that that tree needs to be removed? Well, I think that's a little bit above the scope of an appraisal. But if that appraiser flags it, you can bet you that that buyer and that buyer's agent are going to call for that tree to be removed. They're going to call for it to be removed professionally. They're going to call for the, the, the root ball to be removed. And subsequently, any of the landscape lighting that was disturbed when it was removed, all that's going to have to be dealt with to the tune of $800, $1,200. $1, Where if you and your seller decided to remove that tree before you put it on the market, you probably could have had the local landscape guy come by for a couple hundred bucks and yank it out. 
Same with those flower beds on the left. All the storage of chemicals or weeds growing up through that GFI outlet are the things that staging professionals look for. Now, I love kids. Karen and I have five kids between us. But you know what we don't do? We don't sell the most expensive investment that we have featuring the children's toys or clutter. We want to remove that stuff from the residential real estate listing because, you know, if you were selling Apple stock or Google stock or Amazon stock, you would want to make the stock look the best it could look just before you sold it, right? Well, here, this investment is a half a million dollars. More money than most of these folks have in any stock. But they won't take that extra few minutes to prepare it for the marketplace so they can maximize the return on investment. During our studies across residential real estate active listings with 24 hours notice, we saw retail sellers that had started projects and not finished them. We saw bugs in the fluorescent housing and our eyes were drawn to the bugs because that repair wasn't done. You see what we're getting at here? This is a three-car garage. Now, nobody fantasized about a three-car garage more than me. I always wanted to picture my Lexus, my BMW, my, my sports car in a three-car garage with enough room for a Harley if I wanted to, right? But then when you went out and you looked at the three-car garage, you saw it was stuffed full of junk. Now, that's going to kill the mojo of that three-car garage. You can't tell if it's a one-car, two-car, or three-car. It's so filled with stuff. And we like to say the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Look at the paint job that wasn't finished. Or look at the stains. Look at the daughter's closet. Now this was a large walk-in closet in a third bedroom. You could be highlighting that or you could be downplaying the quality and size of that closet by having it overstuffed during showings. <clears throat> I don't know if you've heard certain religions don't get along real well. And if I'm showing real estate, I probably want to downplay the religious artifacts if I can. But even if you weren't going to make the decision to remove the crucifix display, maybe that's something that's too sensitive for that seller. Why is there a diaper changing table in the dining room? And why is it showing so dark? Why are the, all the windows kind of closed up and dark and the lights aren't on? So we did an after picture of a house like this, the same model, without the religious display, and we removed the diaper changing table, and we put a simple sconce there with, with, um, with tea lights. And we believe that the property shows much brighter, much more open, much more roomy, and is more appealing to a wider audience because we removed the religious artifacts and we've also removed the, the changing table and the darkness and the dampness and the dinginess. Now we don't know each other at all and I don't want to go off on too many tangents because we're in a national lunch and learn league event. So we've got realtors from all over the country with different perspectives, different political, different religious perspectives, different families. But I'm going to tell you something and I know for sure after 32 years of selling real estate. When a lady walks into a lady's bathroom and it looks like this, her nose turns up and she starts looking at all of the other lady's stuff. It's not effective for selling real estate. So if that's the only thing we take away is this, this lady walks into your bathroom to buy it, but then she's drawn to what kind of perfumes and lotions and curling irons and straightening irons you use. Your coffee cup is still out from the night before, and you were given 24 hours notice to show this property to a well-qualified buyer, and you elected to not do anything. Now, when you listen to Victoria Goyo's part two, you're going to see even still there's too much personal property on that countertop. But it already looks a lot better than it did when we walked in. You look at this display here, there's some rules of thumb that a staging expert knows. Take the soap away, take that, that nickel thing away. You only want to have a couple things on the counter 
when you're properly staged. And there's some rules of thumb that Victoria teaches you. We saw a little, lot of little minor repairs uh, in active listings that are active in the MLS retail, not foreclosures. We just look at how simple that was just to stick those back up. Even if they don't work, your eyes aren't drawn to them because they're hanging there, right? Little things, right? Some of you guys are rolling your eyes like, that's common sense, buddy. Well, I'd say 85% of staging is common sense. That caulk line is so discolored and deteriorated. A 99-cent tube of white caulk would have sharpened that up immediately. We see a lot of oddly placed knickknacks in houses. Things that a staging expert would say, just, just put that in a box. Put it up in your next home. You don't need that here. The first thing that I saw in this picture that you should see as a staging expert is the darkness. The fact that when you're going to show a home, the light and brighten should be the first thing that comes to mind. Too much personal property on the nightstand is number two. And number three is why is that cord draped off to the right to get into that outlet? Why don't we just put a, um, a plug behind the bed or or behind that nightstand why are we draping that cable other than that i think it's just light and brighten too much personal property and uh an unconscionable placement of a cord a lot of homes that were built in the 90s had electrical or battery operated smoke detectors that went off in the middle of the night and a lot of sellers just took them down when they went off and they never replaced them we saw this all over the place we saw so much wood rot, and I don't want to belabor the point on, on wood rot. I'm going to go through a lot of these pictures a little quicker because I think you're getting the idea of how the nuance of these little issues of lack of caulk or grout, maybe a little teeny bit of touch-up paint, maybe a little bit of a magic eraser to get some crayons off the table, we call this a necessity, you know, we need to have seven loofahs. We need to have 37, you know, shampoos and conditioners. But maybe, just maybe, when we're showing our house, we might want to go back to those days at college when we used to carry our shampoo and our loofah down to the, to the shower and then bring it back to our dorm room when we're finished. I don't know if that analogy hits home anymore because a lot of the dorms have private bathrooms now. But the point I'm trying to make is that advise your seller that that whole stand should go away and all those loofahs should go away while we're showing the home. And it's going to be a minor inconvenience. This, my friends, was one of the largest master bedrooms I'd ever been in. I think the entirety of the master bedroom suite was 1,250 square feet alone, just the master bedroom. but the first thing is it was very dark because the colors that were chosen were dark. So even if we weren't going to address the paint on the walls, the bare minimum is let's clean the windows and open the blinds. The second thing is you notice there's too much personal property on all of the night tables, even on the, the love seat there. And then last but not least, um, the bed's not made. The least you can do when you're trying to sell your house is make the bed. OK, but all this clutter, all this personal property takes away from the largest master bedroom I personally have ever been in. I've never been in a master bedroom that was over 1,200 square feet. It had a huge sitting area. It had a huge kind of walk-in closet and bathroom area. It was gorgeous, but it just distracted you by all the personal property and clutter. When you get into a bathroom and there's, you know, cultured marble or granite or real marble, and it's distracting. These are little things. Oh, did you notice the dead lizard? Thank you very much for that. We appreciate that. And this we like to call Viagra Alley. I know, I know. But if you, if you look at what your sellers are displaying here, they're displaying their Sonicare and their tissues and their deodorant and their prescriptions and their, their colognes and perfumes. Let's make the move to display the bathroom, right? And the workbook that I'm going to give you here is going to illustrate a, 
a, a step-by-step checklist for you. Now I'm gonna re- I'm gonna quote Peter Drucker in Search of Excellence from the 1970s, and I want to say this to you with absolute respect to the gravity of properly preparing a listing for the marketplace. When In Search of Excellence came out in 1970s, it was the Bible of business. It was a fantastic bestseller. And one of the chapters in the book talked about cleanliness and order and how it attracted consumers to a business. But the quote that I want to point out from In Search of Excellence as you look at this particular picture is when he said that a coffee stain on an airline passenger seat tells the passenger that the jet engines are not maintained properly. So what what In Search of Excellence discovered was that the mind of the passenger on the plane was affected so dramatically by a coffee stain on the passenger seat of their of their plane that they started to question whether or not the airplane's engines were maintained properly. Now, if you could focus on that level of gravity and then you look at this condensation on the air conditioning vent of the house you're trying to sell, what would that tell the home purchaser? What would that tell your borrower? What would that tell your buyer? It would tell the buyer that the home wasn't maintained properly and certainly that air conditioning needs to be replaced. And if you learn anything from part one of staging, it's that buyers paint everything with a very wide brush. Bold colors and wide brush. So when a buyer sees condensation by a air conditioning uh, vent, they immediately think the whole air conditioning has to be replaced. But when a seller sees condensation by an air conditioning vent, they think, oh, I need to replace my filter. Now, it's somewhere between I need to replace my filter and I need to replace the entire air conditioning system, but who's going to win in that battle? The buyer wins because they just move on to another house. And the, and the seller and you as the listing agent never knew that it was because they perceived that the air conditioning had to be replaced is why they're not even considering making an offer on that house. I hope that you see that little shifts like turning that back on its right side tell the buyer that the house is maintained properly. Every seven-year-old girl needs 13 brushes, but you don't need to keep them out when you're trying to sell a house. And every house that's of more than a couple years old needs caulk. But your house needs caulk today because you're trying to sell it. Okay, all those little mungs and whatnot. There's a little known secret using a grocery bag where you put the grocery bag down on the wax on the carpet. This is a drip from a wax candle. And you put the heat on medium of your iron and you just circle move over that. And what happens is the wax is sucked up out of the carpet and attached to the grocery bag. It's uh, all over YouTube if you ever want to YouTube it. Uh, just say how to get wax out of a carpet and you can don't do the repair yourself as the realtor because that opens you up to a lot of liability if you burn the carpet or whatnot but you can share that video with your seller when you see wax in a carpet Uh, rattling through these last few pictures there's a lot of knickknacks and hi-hats that were not done properly Uh, a a chin-up bar that had damaged the door frame And look at this big, beautiful home with the staircase rolling up from the foyer. But you just see the closet door still open. The stains on the carpet weren't repaired. Little clutter items. And even the box next to the front door that was obviously delivered and never never put away. Stains on the carpet that could easily be taken care of. And all the, the, the nuance of landscape, architecture, 
or lack of mulch. I know one of the top realtors at Berkshire Hathaway, and um, kid makes about $900,000 a year selling real estate. Every listing he goes on, he brings grade A cypress mulch and flowering plants. And he installs, he has a handyman, install the grade A cypress mulch and the flowering plants on every new listing that he takes. It's kind of his trademark that he does. Could you imagine if this property had new fresh mulch and flowering plants in front of it when you drove up to see it? It would look like a completely different house. It's just sad to see the lack of, you know, uh, weeding and the, the lack of, of, of care. This particular um, air conditioning drip line lets out right next to the front entry of the house. So the very first thing that you see when you're next to the front door is this puddle of mold that's formed by the drip edge. Can anybody name the 99 cent fix that would change that front entry forever if they just use 99 cents worth of what? Right. Bleach. How hard is it to take a gallon of bleach and, and pour it there and then sort through it? All of these things represent common sense, um, proper preparation for all of us. But you as realtors sometimes bury your head in the sand like the proverbial ostrich. Just take the listing and hope that it sells. Well, if you advise and counsel your seller, your profession is upgraded. Not just you personally, but the industry as a whole is upgraded when you take your responsibility more seriously. So all of these little changes, whether it be taking a wet washcloth where that wallpaper is frayed and just going over that wallpaper with a wet washcloth and smoothing those frayed edges down so that it shows better. That little teeny change. Now we're going to start to move to a couple before and after pictures so that you can kind of tie this all together and wrap a bow on it. And then we're going to move to your home study. But this, my friends, was one of the most beautiful guest rooms I'd ever seen in this house. And it was a huge guest room. It housed a, a, a guest room with a cabana bathroom with a full shower. The, the bathroom opened out to the pool area. And if you could think of the pride and ownership of having some friends come and stay with you from the Northeast, they're coming down to Florida to stay in your house. You've given them a guest suite complete with a master bed, uh, king size master bedroom and a cabana bath that opens out to the pool. But what's the first thing that you saw when you walked into this master, I mean, this guest suite, you saw clutter. And what's the first thing that you noticed when you walked into this king size bed? It was nobody even took the time to make it. Now they were given 24 hours notice before we showed it and they still didn't take the time to clear up all this clutter outside by the cabana bath. So we feature some clutter in the last couple pictures because these are easy, easy fixes for a staging expert. Little clutter issues like this that make the showing go poorly. Now remember we said Peter Drucker in search of excellence when the Passenger sees a stain on the seat, they think that the entire plane is not maintained properly. Well, when your buyer sees this stain in the bottom of the pool, they think it needs a $4,000 Marsite job. Well, what turned out was this was just a stain in the bottom of a good Marsite. There was no functional defect here. There was no need to re-Marsite. But the buyer wins. The buyer thinks it needs to be replaced. Needs a new Marsite. Clutter, trampine, trampolines, and we know that pets derogatorily affect the value of real estate faster than anything. Even if it's just obstructing the showing, if it's pet odor or clutter. Pets are the most beloved part of every family, one of the most beloved parts of your family. But when you're listing your house for sale, you need to take into consideration how the clutter, how the odor, and how the pet behaves during showings 
can distract a buyer from purchasing your home. All right. Again, we, we saw so many air conditioning filters that were filthy in active listings that the sellers were not doing. We saw cobwebs and screens that were filthy. Now, we're going to go to some before and afters where we actually staged some lesser expensive homes. We went to a home, and this is what we saw. We saw the blinds were all closed during the showing, and we asked the seller and the listing agent for permission to take some action as a professional stager. We saw that the ironing board was still out and the property looked kind of rough. Look at the before. I'm sorry. Look at the before and look at the after. Just a couple of subtle changes. Change the lightness, brightness, the clutter, and the open, airy feeling of this floor to home. Now, this property retails for about $265. So the master overlooking the pool area is a huge, huge upgrade for this house. How would they have let us show this house like this if they had any common sense or knowledge about properly preparing a house for the marketplace? Now we went into the bathroom. Now the seller wouldn't let us move his TV. We would have probably moved that TV too if we could have, but they didn't take the time to do that. And then we went into the bathroom and we saw baby's changing table, you know, the baby's bath and all the soaps and everything. Plus, it was a little dark. So we made a few common sense changes to this bathroom and it showed twice as bright with the lights on. We removed all the clutter and we made a little display of the towels over there and it was just even Steven. Now, in a perfectly staged property, we were taking the soaps and the toothbrushes off as well. But look at just the, the bare bones difference from turning the lights on and cleaning up the clutter. I hope you're starting to see that staging a residence is not always about renting furniture or major projects or um, you know renovations. Let's take this last picture. One of the last pictures we'll do together during module one. And maybe raise your hand and, and or holler out to your mortgage professional in the room or the broker in the room or to each other. What are the things that are jumping out on this front entry area? The first thing I see is an old welcome mat. The second thing I see is a walkway that needs to be pressure cleaned. The third thing is all the weeding and grade A cypress mulch needs to be installed. And I'm telling you, that property could look completely different as you're walking up to it. And if you for one moment don't believe that you as a real estate professional being paid 6% of the gross is worth this extra effort, you're making a grave error. This is what sets you apart as a real estate professional. Being, being able to advise a seller, what are the deal killers? What are the equity killers? And where are the equity enhancers? So all my children are in college at one time, thank you very much. And they, they like to uh, show me that I'm old by showing that they don't take notes with pen and paper anymore. They just take notes by taking a picture uh, on their phones. So I always thought that writing something down added to the amount of retention I'd have for it, but everybody just takes pictures of their notes anymore. So I'm going to invite you to take a picture of this slide. I'll leave it up for an extra moment. If you walked away from this module one and the only thing you took away were the 10 equity enhancers, and you maybe walked into every listing with these 10 equity enhancers, you'd already be above the crowd. You'd already be above most realtors. So number 10 in the equity enhancers, no smoke. Cigar smoke, cigarette smoke, kill deals. What you do is you take 20 mule team borax and you go to Home Depot and you get charcoal chips, not charcoal that you use in a, 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 a grill, but little charcoal chips, and you put them in a vented uh, net bag, and you put the charcoal bags under all the furniture, and the charcoal sucks the smell 
of the cigarettes and or cigars out of the house. We've done this in investment properties. We've done this in rental properties. We've done this in condos. And we use 20 mule team borax and charcoal bags to suck the smell of smoke out of a house. <clears throat> Number nine, open, open, open. Brighten all rooms. Lighten and brighten all rooms. Opening all the windows. Cleaning all the windows and cleaning all the screens. Wood rot and rust. It's not if, but when. Do it now. I would put these as the Ten Commandments of listing a house for sale. It's not if, but when are you going to remove all that rust and rot. Fresh grade A cypress mulch or other ground cover. I mean, if your client is using lava rocks, if your client is using river stones, whatever they're using for their ground cover, make sure it's fresh for showing the property. Uh, in markets that are cool, you can use impatiens, warmer markets, begonias, other flowering plants. If there can be some flowering ground cover, <clears throat> start to put a picture in your head of the first time you walked onto Disney World's grounds. How did the grade A cypress mulch and the flowering plants blend together so perfectly that you almost didn't even notice how beautiful it was when you were on the grounds at Disney World? Pooch has got to go. Dogless showings. Take the dog for a walk for every showing. Put him in his crate. Take him outside of the house. If you've got three pit bulls, you might want to consider boarding them when the house is being shown. Anything uh, that's going to take away from the emotional connection that the seller has for that house. Remove clutter. In listing decor, less is more. In listing decor, less is more. Less stuff. Fresh white caulk, clear caulk on dark surfaces. Make sure that you go down to the dollar store. If you, if I was a real estate investor, I would fill my trunk with caulk, bleach, CLR, and I would bring those things to the showing. I mean, I mean, I'm sorry. I would bring those things if I was going to be flipping a house. I know that those first things that I would need: caulk, CLR, and bleach. I'd make sure they were in my trunk at all times. A lot of builders are going to remove the screens when the house is on the market, and they're going to provide corner-to-corner -corner spotless windows. We're going to at least recommend the spotless windows and screens, but if you can convince a seller with one of their larger plate glass windows, any of their big view windows, go ahead and remove the screen. It'll make everything feel cleaner and more attractive when the house is being sold. And the only other thing I'd keep in my trunk is I go down to Ross, I go down to TJ Maxx, you know, one of those discount retailers. Uh, even I was in Home Depot and the new welcome mats were under 10 bucks now, but some of the old front gate welcome mats are now at TJ Maxx or, or Marshalls or Ross, and they're 6 to $10. So what you want to do is you want to take a brand new welcome mat an oversized, beautiful, brand new welcome mat and put it at every entrance of the house. The front door, where the garage enters into the laundry room, the back doors where the sliders go out to the pool or that cabana bath. Anywhere there's an entry area, you want to put in brand new welcome mats. And at 6 to 10, 12, 15 bucks a pop, it's an easy, easy decision to do. And if you as a realtor want to really impress your sellers, Bring, uh, you know, in your trunk, if you have an SUV, bring some welcome mats and show them what those new welcome mats make the house feel like and, and show them what the brand new grade A cypress mulch or, or flowering prints can make you see. I'm going to leave this up for a second. These are the top 10 equity enhancers in the real estate staging expert designation. We believe that these are the things that can make your real estate shine and get top dollar. So I'm going to turn this over to Carrie Fitzpatrick. She's one of the co-founders of Animac Works. She's going to uh, direct you through the real estate staging expert works.com website, reseworks.com. She's also going to share with you exactly how you're going to do your homework, your home study. And I want to just thank you for your time and attention during the National Lunch and Learn League. I want to take one last time before I turn it over to Kerry to thank the mortgage professionals in the room for sponsoring the National Lunch and Learn League. And I want to encourage you as real estate professionals to lock arms with your mortgage professionals, really partner on the personal professional development and the productivity of your real estate career with Annie Mac Works 
productivity platform. Reach out to your mortgage professionals and say thank you. I'm going to turn it over to Carrie just to share with you what your homework is. And we thank you very much for being involved with the Real Estate Staging Expert designation. We hope to create a higher standard real estate professional out in your marketplace. Well, thank you, Russ. My name is Carrie Fitzpatrick. As Russ mentioned, I am one of the co-founders of the Animac Works Productivity Platform, and I'm going to be going over your home study and how you need to go about completing the rest of the parts of your certification. You will have some required materials, which is a digital camera, either a regular digital camera or the digital camera that comes on any of your phones is fine. It doesn't matter to us which is used. You'll also need an active listing or a friendly residential property. In addition to that, you'll need your real estate staging expert home staging booklet. In order to get that, you may go to www.reseworks.com and download it from there. In addition to that, your mortgage loan officers who have you in the room here today have the availability to email it to you immediately following today's class. So with that being said, let me go into what you're going to do with these materials. The real estate staging book is really designed so that you can walk through without feeling awkward or having the tough conversations. It guides you through each room, starting at the curb, and allows you to simply ask the question of either yourself and or yourself and the homeowner and judge it based on simple questions that are asked yes or no. It takes you through the living areas, it takes you through the kitchen spaces, it takes you through the master bedroom and the living areas, and then at the end of walking through all of those areas, you will then tell us your highest priority recommendations, additional recommendations, and ideal recommendations. Well, you should have learned what that was about the last hour, but let me go over what the highest priority recommendations would be considered. They would be considered between zero and $100 worth of fixes, cleaning and decluttering, caulking, putting away personal items, you know, pet or smoke uh, smell, lighten, brighten, overcrowding, taking some stuff out, some simple, easy, common sense and in inexpensive ways to uh, start the ball rolling, if you will. And then we go on to the additional recommendations, which are really between $100 and $500, and they're just sound decisions that should be made or could be made in order to properly prepare a house for sale, such as storing items. Maybe they have some landscaping opportunities, or they have some wood rot that could be fixed now before the home goes on the market, as opposed to after they get a listing contract, and then it becomes a... Um, an inspection problem, right? Let's just get it all taken care of so that it doesn't draw the eye, not only for the sale of the home, but for the actual closing of the home as well. And then maybe professional window cleaning or stains that could uh, be taken out of carpets easily. And you know, a lot of the stuff that we talk about between zero and $500 is minimal investments with a lot of maybe elbow grease and getting that going. And then we come into a perfect world scenario, uh, best case type of things that we could do that are 500 plus. Maybe the, po the pool needs to be remarcited because it's really going to draw an eye and make somebody feel like this home hasn't been kept. Maybe the carpet stain is just so bad that it can't be taken care of and we should address that or other major concerns like painting projects or wallpaper and the like. When you're doing the assignment and you're going through that booklet, what, I, what you have the photograph or the camera for is to take photographs of each staging recommendation. We're not looking for you to actually perform the staging activity. We want you to take pictures and then make a specific notation about each of your recommendations. Then we want you to submit your booklet with your notes and your digital photographs. Now you can put them in a zip file, you can put them in a Dropbox file, however you can get them to us is exactly the way that we want them to get that exactly the way that we want you to get them to us. We want you to choose the way that's the easiest for you, but we wanted you to email it to service at AnnieMacWorks.com. When you do that, please be sure to include a scanned copy of your prioritized recommendations and your budget concerns. 
that go along with each of your staging activities. Now, after you've completed your assignment, we would then invite you to come back for part two with Victoria Gouillet. Part two is really the next level, it's the next step, and it helps you to learn how to get your consumers to the next level of preparation. Victoria will talk to you about paint color of actually ch physically changing walls in a home's color and what the most popular paint colors are for staging a home. She'll talk to you about moving furniture. She'll talk to you about removing large pieces of furniture. She'll talk to you about all of those different things that are the next step or the next level staging activities. We call that class Beyond R-E-S-E, -E, and it's our really our advanced staging class. Victoria Gouillot runs a company called The Stage Coach, where she teaches people how to stage, but not only does she do that, she also does staging herself all day, every day. That's her job. We will then take you in to part three, where we'll invite you to join us for another recorded uh, version of your staging designation, and you can take this at your leisure. So if you go to AnnieMacWorks.com, you're able to take it whenever you want to because you can watch it on demand. And really in part three, we're gonna be talking to you about marketing yourself using your new staging designation. So remember, once you complete all of these parts of this training series, you're going to then have the rights to use our logos and all of our marketing materials that we've created um, on your behalf, and they're fully editable and easily ready for you to download and to use yourself. So once you've completed all of those steps, we want you to fill out your staging questionnaire. Your name, your it's really a simple questionnaire, and it's got a few questions at the bottom um, that are almost like quote unquote your test on the fact that you did pay attention to the different the three different parts and then you did your homework. Once you've done that, you'll then have your license to stage or your license to use all of our materials and you'll be sent your sent your access to your marketing materials and all of your logos. So with that being said, just remember this series is three parts of listening and watching and one part home study where you're physically out and quote unquote doing the actual staging um, activity. We hope that you enjoy your staging designation and we hope that you will honor the mortgage loan officer that is providing this for you. And we hope that you'll complete it and go out there and sell more homes for a higher price for less days on the market. Thank you so much and have a great afternoon.